military has taken control of the border here. I was able to take the 15 illegals to the safe house. I made more money. How much money do you make on that night? Like 25. 25, 25 grand, grand in one night. But I don't understand how the Biden administration is allowing the thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants to cross this border every single day. Nosotros fuimos secuestrados, nos soltaron fue esta mañana. Es todo la voluntad de Dios que él no él nos tiene aquí la verdad. Para mí lo mejor es deportarlo. At Eagle Pass right now, here you can see where they had the razor wire set up. And this right here, if we would have came two weeks earlier, you would have seen hundreds and thousands of people here in this camp. We got National Guard, they have taken over the federal government and they are at war right now with the federal government. They have taken over Border Patrol, cannot even enter in past these wires, and the federal government is getting being blocked from coming inside of here. For the past three years, Eagle Pass, Texas has been at the epicenter of the migrant crisis in the United States. Over 2.5 million migrants came to the United States in 2023, and a vast majority came through here in Eagle Pass. Recently, the Texas government has taken control of the border from the White House, kicking out Border Patrol and sending in the Texas National Guard, creating a war between Texas and the federal government. I wanted to come to Texas and talk to the locals, meet with the military troops, and I even met up with an ex-cartel member who gave me exclusive information about how the cartel is smuggling millions of people into the United States each year. In the parking lot of a Walmart, we're going to be talking to people, seeing what they got to say about what's going on here. So what's going on here in Eagle Pass with all the immigration? Well, that, I, that's pretty bad. Is it pretty bad? Yeah. What can you tell us about what's been going on? Well, it's a lot of people from different places. And what do you think is going to happen with all this immigration here? Well... Well, right now it's pretty slow, so I don't know. I don't know. You never know when all those people are coming. Oh, okay. Because sometimes they come in 10, 10, 15 people, and then the other day come in 1,500. So. What president do you think would be best to control the situation? Mm, I don't know. President Trump it was pretty, pretty bad in immigration. But, I mean, still they waste a lot of money, and they never do anything with it. ¿Qué está pasando aquí? Con todos los inmigrantes. Pues mucho desastre está pasando. Uh -huh. Están tirando mucha basura. Muchos se están ahogando en el río. Eh, ¿Está destruyendo la ciudad de Eagle Pass? Sí, están destruyendo la ciudad también. Uh -huh. In... Tirando mucha basura por todos lados y todo. ¿Y qué, ¿Qué piensas va a pasar con todo eso? No sé qué vaya a pasar, pero están haciendo mucho mal. Para mí lo mejor es deportarlos. Deportarlos. Mm -hmm. ¿Y usted, uh, usted en un, algún momento uh, fue un inmigrante, tam, inmigrante aquí? No, no, yo también fui inmigrante, pero no había tanto desorden como ahora. ¿El gobierno o el, el presidente ahora mismo ha hecho algo para que podrían como, tratar de resolver este tema? No ha hecho nada. No ha hecho no nada. Ha hecho nada. No ha hecho nada el gobierno por eso están las cosas así como están. ¿Has visto seen inmigrantes aquí en su ciudad? come over the border and they start like running around and yeah there's, like there's a bunch and they start asking for like money rides and food stuff like that what chaos have you seen here in eagle pass with everything uh just a lot of people like all over the place and like people with kids like the immigrants they have their, their babies their kids and they're out in the they're out in the cold and then and then we met this guy who told us where we needed to go to get to the border right in front of this fence is where the, everyone's coming in on this other side. The military, as you can see, is taken over. And we had to make a few phone calls. They gave us a phone number to call. And we called that phone number, and they are going to let us come through. They're going to be taking us through. They're going to give us an escort. All right, we're getting escorted right now. Here are the parks where they have been loading up the immigrants. As of right now, there are none because Governor Abbott has actually taken control, and there's a huge fight going on this week about the federal government and state government. And right now, as you can see, the state government is winning because nobody's here. The Border Patrol was not able to protect the border due to commands from the White House, so the Texas governor sent the National Guard to overthrow the Border Patrol, and now Texas is handcuffing migrants and using force to deny access to America from illegal immigrants. The military is taking control of the border here. This is the wire. And right on the other side, over there, we have the Mexican uh, military. Getting escorted by the military right now. They're telling us what's kind of going on here. We're on the border road right here. So the shipping containers are 
made as walls and on top of it they have bob wire up there. The boxes are just filled with razor wire and then looks like they're building the fences right here. And then they get put up here on the shipping containers. We got stray dogs here living in the clothes of the immigrants that have came over. A bunch of just clothes, everything caught up here in this razor wire. That's Mexico right there. And they literally just come across the river and they walk across and then we take them in. I mean, I don't even know how you would get through that razor wire. It's so thick. Also, there's just a golf course right here. Mexico, border, and people playing golf. Like nothing's going on, just out with the boys playing golf while wow, we got Bunch of people coming over. After this Texas state representative was done talking with Fox News, he was nice enough to give me an interview to explain why Texans are so mad about what is happening at their border. The state of Texas has literally spent billions of dollars uh, for border security. We're coming down to see how the money that we approved in the Texas, Texas state legislature is being spent. And how is that money being spent right Well, now? you can see, I mean, razor wire, the boats, the helicopters, the troopers, the extra troopers that we have down here, uh, it actually seems we far outnumber the U.S. government border patrol. We certainly far outnumber what our federal government doing as far as putting resources down here to secure our border. So because the federal government's not doing their job, the state of Texas decided to step in, spend literally billions of dollars in the last several years to beef up our border security to protect our citizens. And why won't the federal government do anything about this? You'll have to ask them. It, it's beyond me. I don't understand it. I don't understand how the Biden administration is allowing the thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants to cross this border every single day. And not only the, the human, humanitarian issue, but the amount of drugs coming across our border every single day. Fentanyl is the number one killer of 18 to 45 year olds in the United States of America today. Mm -hmm. And our federal government is doing nothing to stop it. For me, it looks pretty easy, like they're coming across, it looks like almost like right over, right over, come right over. We, we watched a crossing, we, we saw a crossing just from the helicopter just now. Really? And, and they, they came across, they sit down, they're waiting to be picked up, because they know that they're not going to be shipped back. And why can't they just tell them to go back, like this border's they, uh, closed? Well, they, these troopers have said that they do that, mm -hmm. but, on the, but they're encouraged to come across because they're here. I mean, who knows how far they've traveled? We know they traveled some of them potentially from d deep down in South America. Mm -hmm. So they've made it here and they know they're gonna be welcome here. And that's our problem. Our federal government is not saying don't come here. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be turned back. Yeah. We need that force. We need that force of the federal government to say, We'd love to have you here if you come legally, but if you come here illegally, you get, we're going to send you back home. Inside Eagle Pass, there are many shelters where illegal immigrants are invited to come after they cross the border to receive free clothes and free food. So I went and talked to the pastor at the foundation. What do you think about what's going on right now? The community is just simply depleted of resources, of energy, of strength, as you've had hundreds of thousands of people over the years come through. And then, you know, so how as a community then do you respond? There was an article that came out in the newspaper that from September to the beginning of January where the local ambulance and emergency service spent over $2.2 million. What does a community do that loses a budget of $2.2 million in emergency services? How do they replenish that in a community that's about 28,500 people? You as a pastor, what would you think God would be saying to these people at this time? As a pastor, God's saying that even though this influx is happening, there's a reason why they're coming. And no matter what the enemy might have been using for a reason for them coming, if I'm willing to walk three to four months and can't even wear shoes because I have such bad blisters on my feet, and my wife is being raped, my children are in constant a state of murder or harm or horrible things that can happen to them, if I'm willing to make that trip, then it must be pretty bad. And if God has opened up a way for that reason, to, for those needs to be met that they're not receiving from where they're coming from, then I believe that we as a nation have to do a better job of providing uh, support for when those people come, there's a system for them to come in. Right now, they're being promised the world. You come to America, we'll give you the world, right? America is not capable, but God is. So to answer your question, I believe that's the job of the local church. Mm -hmm. And that's where the people in the church have to get up off their seats and get out on those streets and help these people and meet them where they are. After talking with the pastor, we moved to a new location where we heard migrants might be crossing. It smells of just 
honestly just like death. If I could describe it one way, the smell is just wretched. It's really bad. It smells like a dead deer or something. The smell's horrible. It smells like roadkill. Um, tons of stuff. If you look around here right now, there you can find makeup, lots of scriptures, shoes, Crocs, underwear. And the craziest thing is right here is the river. Literally 100 feet is razor wire, military. But after that, the fence is just completely gone and they can just come right through here super easily. What do you think, Brooker T? I think it's really humbling being out here. The saddest is when I see like little Spiderman backpacks or little tiny shoes, because a lot of children have been brought through here. But a lot of human trafficking goes on with this illegal immigration. I mean, when they come up, they'll just take off their clothes and throw it there. So that's where they carry their dry clothes and, and then they uh, change out and leave. The reason why there are so many clothes is because what they do is they cross the border. Like, oh, look at that. Someone's jewelry right there. Is because they cross the border and then behind, then on their backpacks, they have a change of clothes. So they hurry and strip off their clothes because they're soaking wet. And they put on a new pair of clothes. And that's why you see this huge pile up. With there being no crossings in Eagle Pass, we have left Eagle Pass. We've taken about a two hour drive and now we are here at Loretto now. We're hopefully going to be able to find more people that are coming across, be able to talk to some migrants and get some more action. As we are driving through Loretto, we stopped at a shelter. Have you guys seen any uh, effects here of the immigration? Or do you guys no, know where migrants no, are coming no. across right now? Nothing. I don't know. No, we don't know nothing. We're clueless. These people couldn't help me, so I kept walking and talking to people, and I met a person who claimed he used to smuggle illegal immigrants for the Mexican cartel. Um, do you guys know where people are coming across? Or? I do, but it's going to cost you. Yeah? yeah. It's it's secret. These are secrets. You don't got no gun on you or anything like that, right? <laughs> no, no, you, you can't. Okay. You get I have beer. All right, but no smoking in the car. No, 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 no. This guy says he knows where everyone's coming through. We're going to give him a free lunch. He's going to take us where we need to go. Yes, sir. I'm going to take you. Uh, sir, it's My face is not going to come out, right? No, no, we can blur it. So I'm well known here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cartel from oh. Mexico. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, come on in. You, our boys are going to take us where we need to go today. We got to get uh, some live action. You guys excited? Yeah, it's a little dangerous what you think. Yeah, it's dangerous. It's a little dangerous where we're going? Da dangerous, yeah. Oh, okay. Spice. What makes it so dangerous? Uh, we know a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, like, I want to say, like, I can't really say with who, but... Um, there's cartels that like have spots. So, so is the cartel has mm -hmm. the cartel infiltrated here in Texas? Are they on the U.S. side? Yes. They, yes. They run their uh, organizations by um, like crossing them over. Still work picking up illegals, doing all that stuff. Yeah. Wow. So you know, you really know where we're going. Yes. <laughs> so you think we'll see people coming over today? Probably uh, not. Probably not. Cause it's too cold. Mm -hmm. So it's all the work load right now. Mm -hmm. There's two places I can take you. Okay. Okay. One of them is really close. Um, it's a uh, like a dirt road. Mm -hmm. Victor, how do you know where to go? I used to work for them, so these are spots where I used to go and pick up illegals. How much would the cartel pay you when you'd work for them? <laughs> Depends. Mm -hmm. Depends on how much that person paying them. How much are you think an illegal immigrant or a migrant is paying to come to America? Depends like on, on average? Depends on where they're going in America. Yeah. Say they're going to New York City. No, that's a lot of money. Yeah. That's, that's, that's like probably 15000 just for that one person. 15000 a person. More than that. You go to like New York, man, you finna pay a lot. Let's see. So let's break this down a little bit. So after they get here to America, right? Are there more cartels here in the United States that then help them to get to the big cities? Yeah, it's more than just cartel. It's, yeah, it's more than just cartel. It's basically everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And are the government collecting money from this? You have to. You, they have to. Yeah. I mean, how else is how else is the border gonna be used for this thing about you cross I mean, people, you cross the government's definitely getting a lot of money off this. Everybody. Certain members of the government. And what what made you stop wanting to work for the cartel? <laughs> how do how do you get out? You don't. You don't. You just run away. 
or die. Yeah. Then, you know. Or they'll come find you, and then they'll take you back to Mexico, and then yeah, never get torture you, cut you into pieces while you're still alive, and basically record everything and put it up so yeah. everyone can see. And once you disappear, you, it's you, your family, your friends. Really? Whoever knows you. Disappears. Oh, would be they all disappear. Not just one person is going to disappear. It's just a lot of people. Wow. I'm only being looked for in Mexico. And why are you being looked for in Mexico? Um, some stuff disappeared. Some stuff, <laughs> some stuff disappeared. Oh, yeah, some stuff disappeared. Now they are looking for me and they want to kill me. I'm getting nervous here. Should I be getting nervous? No. I know what we're doing. It's not, no like, it's, it's not like yeah, we're picking up illegals. Yeah, trust me, you can go through my phone. Ain't nobody breaking it. <laughs> but this is one of the easiest spots okay. to cross from Mexico to Laredo, Texas. There's a border patrol over mm -hmm. there on that side. That's what I said. It's the only side yeah. you don't want to go. Yeah, that's yeah. the side that you don't want to go to because that's where uh, they'll stop us. Ask us questions, stuff like that. The border patrol. The border patrol. So when you would bring, when you were working with the cartel and you were bringing people over, what time at night or what times at day would you come here? Uh, it was usually between two in the morning and six in the morning. Two in the morning, six in the morning, quiet hours. When it was, uh, I guess, money hungry, I would come like during the day, and it was pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, make at least like 20 grand in like 30 minutes really you're yeah. making 20 grand in 30 minutes picking yeah. people up yes sir that's some pretty good cash i wish i was making 20 grand every 30 minutes oh, yeah i mean the money's good it's fast dangerous if you like if you like that type of adrenaline yeah it's badass <laughs> especially when they like start following you the border patrol? The border patrol. And so people come and they just swim across this or? Yeah. That's already like the highway on that side. That's Mexico on the other side of the river. That's Mexico. Right there. That's Mexico right there. Um, they usually run all the way down to that little trail mm -hmm. and then cross, start swimming yeah. and uh, cross through here. Wow. And then I would park over there on the top they would start running like maybe like 10 to 15 people mm -hmm. illegals and jump in my truck and then take off and take them to a safe house and who who runs the safe houses um cartels also by cartel here in the also united by states cartels. yeah wow so it sounds like the cartel they're also here in the united states they have their own safe houses where they have people like my guy who used to work for used to work for him help him out and then they take them to safe houses here in the United States. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> yeah. I started at a young age. I started at 17. Uh, I just recently stopped, like a year ago. How'd you get out? How'd you stop? Just uh, act, act like if I disappeared, went uh -huh. somewhere else. Do you know anywhere we could go today where we could see some crossings? Ain't nobody working, trust Ain't me. Ain't nobody working it's right cold. now. It usually stops in Aww. December <laughs> and January. Mm -hmm. yeah. December and January, they stop crossing because it's the coldest and nobody wants to be locked up in the holidays. Is that why you see people coming in through like Arizona and other places where it's a lot warmer now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. People are going through the desert because it's warmer. And what's the wildest story you can tell us right here that's happened right here in this location in your in your years of working? I guess the, the best part was um, I picked up 20 uh, on a Suburban. No, no, no. Armada. Nissan Armada. Um, <laughs> I had picked, I came in here, picked up 15, took them. I started go heading out. Uh, the Border Patrol start coming after me. So I start hitting the freeway. The highway, I get the highway, and I start going uh, back to Laredo. I turned into this high school. So I went through there. I mean, the cops the cops were after me. Border Patrol was after me. I couldn't 
all I felt was that adrenaline of just getting away. Wow. So once I hit the straight uh, street, I saw they weren't close enough to me. So I started zigzagging through the streets and everything. Ended up hiding out for like maybe like an hour. <laughs> they didn't catch me. I was safe. I was able to take the 15 illegals to the safe house. I made more money. How much money do you make on that night? <laughs> like 25. 25, 25, 25 grand, grand in one night. 25 grand in one night. That is absolutely crazy. Yeah. Absolutely yeah, they were from Brazil. They're from Brazil. Yeah, they're the most expensive. And how much are they paying per body to get over? Man, they're paying. I really don't know, but they're paying a lot. Around 5 grand, 10 grand? More. More. Up, upwards of 20? Yeah. Wow. A lot of money's being made with illegal. Immigration. Wow. And then in this neighborhood, there's just normal houses, nice cars. No, yeah. And behind it, there's just a lot of cartel running right through it. No, you'd be surprised how many of these are stash houses. Stash houses where they stash the immigrants when they come through? There's more than just immigrants. There's, there's a lot of shit. Wow, so a lot of those houses in that neighborhood are probably used to smuggle immigrants, drugs, anything like that? Yeah. There was a all white family from Washington. Them niggas got like 7,000 immigrants. You would never suspect this shit. Really? So a lot of those people that live in that neighborhood you think are also smuggling people in there? Well, a lot the of cartel? people. It's just the ones you would never suspect. Just people you never suspect. Yeah. You'll see grandma running down the street every day with her dog. You'll never suspect she's that woman. Wow, we were just with ex-cartel members. They just gave us the lowdown. That guy just told us so much information. So much that I didn't want to hear what he was saying. And <laughs> I... My mouth is still dry because I've been a little bit hyperventilating inside. <laughs> so Owen was a little nervous. Because the river was so cold and the National Guard was protecting the border, no migrants were coming through the river. However, we walked around the town to see if we could find some migrants who had entered in by another way. De donde son? De Honduras. Cuánto tiempo lleva aquí? Ahorita acaban de llegar. Oh, genial. ¿Cómo fue este para traer su niña para aquí? La verdad fue muy difícil porque nosotros estuvimos hasta dos semanas caminando, durmiendo en calles, en parques, pero ahí estaban mi, mis dos hermanos y mi esposa que me ayudaban bastante con la, con la ella, niña. Ella también tenía que caminar y hacer todo. La chineaba entre ellos y por ratos ella caminaba porque uno, uno se cansa, sin comida, sin agua. Tiene frío bastante y tiene, <ríe> tiene frío. Y sí, el cansancio. ¿Cuántos años tiene ella? Cinco. ¿Cinco años? Cinco años. Wow, ¿Y ustedes hicieron el viaje desde Honduras hasta aquí? Salimos el 3 de octubre de Honduras hasta hoy que entramos aquí. Me imagino que están muy felices, muy contentos. La verdad que sí, es algo que aún no lo creemos que estemos aquí porque fue muy difícil el camino, pero para Dios es nada imposible. Es toda la voluntad de Dios que Él, no, Él nos tiene aquí, la verdad. ¿Y ahora qué es lo que esperan que... Hola, señor. ¿Cómo está? ¿Qué tal? Muy bien. ¿Su familia acaba de llegar? Sí. Ah, oh, qué genial. ¿Cuántos días o años les han estado esperando? Eh, no, llevamos seis meses esperando. ¿Cómo está? Yo soy la Naida. Qué gusto conocerlo. <risa> ¿Estás feliz para estar aquí? Sí. Sí. Muchas gracias para ustedes. ¿Y cómo ha sido su vida desde que llegó aquí en los Estados Unidos? No, todo bien. Yo hace poquito que también, yo hace dos meses más que estoy aquí. Y entré por aquí también. ¿Y cómo es el proceso para entrar? Eh, una aplicación, sí, por el teléfono se aplica y... Bueno, y ustedes acaban de llegar hoy día, ¿cierto? Sí, sí. ¿Y, de entrar ¿Y cómo fue el, el trayecto? La verdad, un poco difícil. Un poco difícil, muchos... Uh, ¿Meses o días que están viajando? Tres meses. ¿Y ahora qué es lo que espera que pase aquí en los Estados Unidos con tu vida? Pues mejorar mi vida. ¿Van a quedarse aquí en Texas o van a ir a otro lugar? Eh, ahorita la verdad no sé. Mm -hmm. Vamos a buscar el asilo. Just talk to the people. They say there's an app that they're using now. This is the paper they give them right here. And they fill it out and then they're getting sent to these processing centers. And then from there, they come to the United States legally. And on this app, they're giving a court date, which they need to appear in court. And most of these court dates are about five years out. They're not like recent court dates that they need to appear at because so many illegals have came in that the court system is literally backed up for years for these people. 
Ah, ok. Y aquí en los Estados Unidos hemos recibido muchos inmigrantes y hay muchas personas que dicen por que ahora tenemos una admira, admiración. ¿Y ¿Ustedes se sienten que ahora es como el tiempo para venir a los Estados Unidos? Uh, sí. sí ¿Cómo? Yo, ¿Cómo? ¿Cómo fue más fácil ahora que fue antes, an anteriormente? Sí, la verdad que sí. Sí, sí fue, fue mucho más fácil que fue antes. Sí, sí. sí ¿Por qué piensa que fue más fácil? Por el motivo de que, pues, ya estaba lo, la aplicación y nos ayudaba bastante eso también a nosotros para poder llegar hasta este lugar de aquí. Uh -huh. Y lo facilitaba, un poco lo facilitaba el, el poder entrar y buscar una manera de, de refugio aquí en Estados Unidos. Y, uh, ¿Había mucho interacciones con el cartel durante el proceso? ¿Con los carteles? Uh -huh. Sí, la verdad que sí. Hay muchas partes cuando la gente se secuestran a los niños, a las personas, hacen mucho abuso. Sí, sí. Bueno, de hecho, bueno. Gracias a Dios, no mire eso, lo que más dicen que cuando secuestran a las mujeres las violan. Al frente de su esposo, al frente de su mamá, al frente de quien sea, violan a sus hijas. Puede ser niña, chiquita, puede ser una adulta o como sea, las violan, ellos les da igual. Hubo una mujer embarazada y le sacaron al niño. Le partieron el estómago y le sacaron al niño. Y se lo dejaron colgado en un, en un cerco. ¿En sí, sí. Porque no pudo pagar lo que se llama, lo que le dicen la cota. Entonces cortaron el sí, estómago y sacaron, y la la sacaron el bebé y lo dejaron colgado en un cerco. Y a ella también. En Andorres dejaron su casa, todas sus sí, cosas, sí. dejaron dejamos, todo ahí. Dejamos nuestras madres, hermanos y casa, casa propia también, pero como la situación estaba un poco difícil. Buscamos la manera de poder sacar adelante a nuestras familias, no con riqueza, va, sino que lo, con lo necesario. Pues ya que el que se llena de riqueza, pues nunca va a tener nada. Uh -huh. He escuchado que México es muy mal, ¿es la verdad? Nosotros fuimos secuestrados, nos soltaron fue esta mañana. Nos soltaron esta mañana, no. ahorita en la mañana. ¿En serio? ¿Le saltaron sí. hoy? Sí, hicieron? nos robaron pues, todo y pagamos el rescate. ¿Cuánto tenía que pagar este momento? 900. 900. Dólares por persona. No, bueno, saliendo del aeropuerto. Nos agarraron. ¿Ahí dónde les llevó? No, nos ¿Dónde? encerraron en un sitio que no sabemos dónde queda. Y nos soltaron hoy para cumplir con la cita, porque pagamos, pues. uh -huh. wow. y ya. Y ahorita, bueno, aquí estamos esperando para un refugio o algo para, para seguir avanzando. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will be responding to your comments down below. This is Nick, and I will see you next video.